In Alberta, more than 17,000 residents are still displaced from their homes by an outbreak of wildfires. Here's a satellite image capturing the detectable thermal activity over the past week, showing the massive wildfires across the province. The province is now five days into a state of emergency, and all of this, of course, with a provincial election campaign underway. One community is asking for the province to call it off, at least for now. Okay, but Robin Bell is the spokesperson for Alberta Elections, and she joins us from Banff. Uh, Robin, I, I know running an election is difficult at the best of times. A state of emergency sure isn't helping. Can you give me a sense of how this is affecting, how many voters and how many ridings are being affected by these fires? Yeah, that's a great question, David. Uh, so right now we have about nine uh, areas that have been specifically impacted. Uh, those areas are Peace River, Lesser Slave Lake, West Yellowhead, Central Peace Notley, Drayton Valley, Devon, Grand Prairie, Wapiti, Black St. Anne, and Park, and uh, two more that are under watch right now. Uh, so we're looking at about 30,000 people who have been evacuated, uh, and then more than that if we consider uh, the communities that are on an evacuation watch right now. So, so with all of that, I mean, in the middle of an election, which you want to run properly and fairly, I mean, this creates some complications, obviously. So I, I wonder, what are the criteria that need to be met for a vote and a riding for even the whole election uh, for it to be delayed? How do you do that? Yeah, so as we approach voting days, if the chief electoral officer concludes that we no longer have the ability to provide voting services or access to voting, we can make an application to the Court of the King's Bench to discontinue the election in individual electoral divisions. And once that application has been made, that decision's with the court. And so there's 87 electoral divisions. Those applications need to be made one electoral division at a time based on factors that are impacting our ability to offer voting in those divisions. Okay, so there's 87 overall, and you said nine are currently affected, correct? So that's, uh, that's you know, a little, right. a little yeah. over 10%. And in an election, that's expected to be this tight. I mean, that's not an immaterial number. Uh, so, I mean, what sort of contingency plans do you have in place to, to see it proceed as scheduled, if you can? Yeah, great question. So there's a few things that we've done to try to... Uh, still be able to facilitate voting. Last week, the chief electoral officer expanded the eligibility criteria for special ballots uh, to include displacement due to wildfire. So electors who have already been displaced and have somewhere they can receive mail to can apply for that mail-in ballot. Once we get into voting days, all of our advanced voting locations offer the vote anywhere service. So no matter where you are in the province, you can visit any advanced voting location and you can receive the ballot for your electoral division and still be able to vote. Okay. If we do have to make applications, oh sorry. No, no, you go ahead. You go right ahead. I thought you were finished. You keep going. You finish. Yeah. <laughs> so I was going to say, if we do have to make those applications to the court to discontinue voting in some uh, divisions, uh, then we'll seek a new election date for those areas and that will have to happen within six months. Right. Okay, so they would essentially become almost like a by-election, right? I mean, it's not technically a by-election, but they'd be done as yes. one-offs if they had to be done. And look, we're still a long ways away from voting day, so things can get a lot better, but there's also the potential it could spread and get a little bit worse. So how would you know? I assume there's no playbook, really, for knowing, right? But how would you know when you might have to say, this is not going to work? Is there a date by which you have to make this call, you think? So there isn't a specific date that we're looking at. We're just continuing to monitor the situation very closely. And we need to be able to decide if we can still offer voting locations. So for communities that have been evacuated, we're looking at where they've been evacuated to. Can we still offer voting services in the places that they've been evacuated to? Uh, and for communities that are allowed to return home now, uh, are they actually returning home? So there's quite a few factors at play before we can make that decision to, to make an application to the court. I, I presume the answer to this question is no, but do political considerations come into this at all? I don't mean like whether it benefits the New Democrats or the United Conservative Party, but whether or not there's been the ability to have a fair campaign, you know, for the candidates to actually campaign in a particular area, or is it just strictly whether or not the vote can be done safely and fairly? That becomes the criteria. So... As it's written in the Election Act, we need to look at if we can still facilitate voting in that area so the campaigning process isn't factored into that decision. 
Okay. Well, Robin Bell, uh, thank you so much. You got a tough job at the best of times, and I hope it gets easier as the days go on. That's Robin Bell with Alberta Elections. Thanks for joining us tonight. Thank you.